Hello viewers, how are you? Welcome to my channel. A patient presented with chronic hoarseness of voice. On the endoscopic examination, we found this kind of finding. The laryngoscopic picture showed that the patient has an ulceration in one of the vocal cords in its mid and posterior aspect. We did direct laryngoscopic biopsy from the ulceration under general anesthesia and the report showed that the ulceration is due to tuberculosis. Today I am going to talk about tubercular laryngitis. Tubercular laryngitis is almost always secondary to pulmonary tuberculosis that is it is sputogenic or bronchogenic. It is rarely blood borne. It mostly affects male patients of middle age group. Now come to the pathology of a tuberculosis of larynx. Tuberculosis affects posterior part of the larynx most commonly than the anterior part. Tubercle bacilli first settle on the mucus of the larynx then it penetrates the mucosa and forms a submucosal tubercle. The tubercle then caseates and ulcerates to form ulceration of larynx. The whole laryngeal mucosa looks congested and swollen due to cellular infiltration which is also known as pseudoedema. So what are the clinical features of tuberculosis of larynx? It depends on a stage of tuberculosis. Weakness of voice is the earliest sign. Then the patient experiences hoarseness of voice. Ulceration of larynx can cause severe pain which can radiate to the ears. In later stages the swallowing can become painful with marked dysphagia. Now I will talk about laryngoscopic findings in case of tuberculosis of larynx. There are some interesting findings. These findings are hyperemia of the vocal cord, swelling of the interatrial region which gives mammillated appearance. Ulceration of the vocal cord gives rise to mouse nibbled appearance. There may be superficial ragged ulceration over the arytenoid and interarytenoid region. Granulation tissue may be seen in the interarytenoid region or on the vocal process of the arytenoid. There may be pseudoedema of the epiglottis which is called turban epiglottis. The ventricular bands and aryepiglottic folds may be swollen and the surrounding mucosa may show marked pallor. To diagnose, first we have to do direct laryngoscopic biopsy from the ulcer under general anesthesia. In addition, we can do chest x-ray and sputum for A B test. Treatment is same as pulmonary tuberculosis. That is anti-tubercular drug should be continued according to the protocol but voice rest is very important. Forced whisper is not recommended, patient can talk with quiet whisper. In the end, what may be the differential diagnosis of ulceration of vocal cord apart from tuberculosis? It may be carcinoma, it may be ulceration due to syphilis, leprosy, pachydermia, even it can be chronic simple laryngitis. I hope you have enjoyed today's session. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.